So what did you get for Christmas? How many of you got asked that this morning yet as you came in or you've asked somebody? Usually, <laughs> what's that? I missed it. What'd you get for Christmas? Oh, cool. That sounds pretty nice. Well, that's great. Well, you know, that is an often, uh, it's an often asked question on this day every year or soon after. And from a worldly perspective, of course, we talk about the actual gifts that we have received, the material things. Sometimes we talk about the things that we hoped to get or wanted to get and didn't get. But if you have a heart of appreciation, you are truly thankful for the things that you have been given. And so this morning, with us all in this room together, I just wanted to keep this kind of lighthearted, but also um, very focused on being grateful for the many gifts that we've all been offered from God. And just take a little bit of time to focus on that, think about it, and let it bring some joy and encouragement to your heart. And if there's some of these gifts that you either haven't realized that you've been given them yet, or some gifts that he's offering that you haven't yet received, I want you to be encouraged today that God is the great gift giver, has given us so many gifts. In fact, the Bible tells us in James chapter 1, verses 17 through 18, it says this, Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. He chose to give us birth through the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruits of all who are created. So we need to first of all just realize that every gift that we enjoy in life literally is coming from God. And I love it that he's referred to here as the Father of Lights. And we see all the lights at Christmas time and uh, we enjoy the sunshine each day. God has given us all these wonderful good gifts. One of the main gifts that he has given us, it all begins out of his heart of grace. And so we're given the gift of grace. And there's another Bible passage that talks about that in John chapter 1, verse 16. From the fullness of his grace, we all have received. Did you, did you catch that? We all have received. Will you say that with me? We all have received. So God doesn't leave anybody out. You say, but Mark, I never got anything from God. Well, if you're sitting here this morning, you absolutely have gotten a lot of stuff from God. You just haven't acknowledged who it's come from, but it doesn't change the truth that he's given it to you. We have all received this gift of grace, and, and in that, one blessing after another. You see, there are people that receive God's grace, and I've talked about this before. There's, there's common grace that God extends to all humanity, and we're going to look at a few of those common grace gifts but then also, there's some specific grace gifts that God gives to each of us. But everything that I'm going to mention from here on out in this list of what I got for Christmas and hopefully what you understand that you got for Christmas is all of these things and it comes out of the first of all, the gift of his grace. Grace means undeserved favor. We haven't done anything to earn it, but God in his love wants to give it to us. There are some individuals this year, like every year, that God just lays on my heart to, to, to want to give something to them. And I'm not saying this boasting, I'm just saying this is part of God's grace that flows into my heart, and then it just spills over, and I want to share that grace with others. So there's sometimes I give something to somebody, and they say, you didn't have to do that. Well, yeah, I know I didn't have to do it. I wanted to. It's God's grace overflowing in me, and, and so I'm just grateful. Well, we have, of course, the gift of physical life. In Isaiah 42, verse 5, it says this, Thus says God the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread forth the earth and that which comes from it. Did you catch that? This beautiful earth that we have, all the vegetation, the food that we eat, everything that springs up out of the ground, out of the earth. All of these things are a gift from God who spread forth the earth and that which comes from it, who gives breath to the people on it and spirit to those who walk in it. So now he begins to talk about not only our physical material life, but our spiritual life. And we're going to look at that in a moment. But right now, as you said, just humor me a little bit. Play along, if you will. Hopefully, you'll trust me with this. But just close your eyes for a moment. 
Some of you, and I want you to just relax. For some of you, you're, you're going to appreciate this moment, <laughs> the way your, your morning has been. So just for a moment, close your eyes and relax. And then I want you to also close your mouth. <laughs> I can't believe it. The preacher told me to shut my mouth. <laughs> but close your mouth. And now I want you to just draw a, as big, long, deep a breath in as you can through your nostrils. just as big and long as you can now you can let it out just and keep your eyes closed if you want if it's freaking you out it's okay you can open your eyes but I want you to focus on the feeling do it do it again long deep breath in through your nostrils can you kind of feel the coolness on the end of your nose a little bit as the oxygen is is coming up through your nostrils and you know the air temperature is a little cooler than your body temperature so you get that kind of cool refreshing sense and then as you let it out, now I want you to take your fingers and just put up under your neck there somehow, press them, don't choke yourself. But see if you can just press up in there. I can feel mine, I can feel my pulse. Can you feel that? Every little throb, every heartbeat. I mean, those are gifts from God. God, God is pouring out gifts for you and I every second every moment of every day and and some of you I know are going through tough times and you don't maybe understand who God is or why he does what he does or maybe you're not even sure that he really exists and you don't know why so many people talk about him but it doesn't matter because God loves you anyway and he's giving you the gift of that breath and he's giving you the gift of that heartbeat and that life because he loves you physical life is a precious gift from God and I pray that this morning, in maybe a fresh new way, you'll begin to just appreciate that. But as I mentioned, it's more than just your physical life. God gives you the gift of spiritual life. In Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11, the Bible puts it this way. God has made everything beautiful in its time, because some things don't seem beautiful when they're happening, but sometimes, if enough time passes and we look back, we can even see how sometimes through our trials and tribulations, Things, things can actually work out. It's really weird. And especially if you trust Christ, you will see how he can take even all the bad stuff that happens in our life and somehow he will help us learn from it and bring us to a better place. But Ecclesiastes 3.11 puts it this way. God has made everything beautiful in his time. He has also set eternity in the human heart. Yet no one can fathom what God has done from beginning to end. What that verse tells us is that... God has put within each one of us this idea that there has to be more to life than just what I'm seeing in front of me. There has to be more to life than just this material stuff. There has to be more to life than just problems and trials and difficulties. And in fact, Jesus affirms that. He says, absolutely, there is more to life than just what we see with our physical eyes. In Luke chapter 12, verse 23, Jesus said this, life is more than food and the body more than clothes. And in John 6.63, Jesus said, it's the spirit who gives life. The flesh is no help at all. And then he says this, the words that I have spoken to you, they are spirit and they are life. So as I'm even speaking these words from Christ to you today, they are a gift that Christ has given to me and to all of us. And I'm repeating them and sharing them to you. It is the gift of the teaching and the message of Christ because in his words... In his message is true spiritual life and that moves us into the next part of the gift of life that God gives us the gift of eternal life John 3 16 is such a familiar passage to many people in fact if you know it kind of say it along with me hey if you don't know it guess what cheat sheet on the screen <laughs> say it with me for God so loved the world he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have, there it is, everlasting life. Christ is a gift from God. Christ gives his life for us so that we can have a life even beyond this physical life that we know and experience now. God has something more wonderful in store for us if we will receive the gift of Christ that he offers. 
I don't want to make this a downer, but in the same way, if you're offered a gift and there's something really cool inside, but you look at that gift and you're like, well, I don't like the person giving it to me or I think there's some ulterior motive attached. I'm not going to take that gift. I'm not going to receive it. Guess what's going to happen? You are not going to be able to enjoy whatever is in that gift, right? It's been offered to you. It's yours. Your name is on it. But if you reject it, you're not going to get the benefit of that gift. Now, here's the harsh part of the sermon that you need to hear. Christ has offered you and I eternal life, but you must receive it. You must receive him. You must trust him, invite him into your life. Receive that gift by believing. You don't have to understand it all. God will help you with that, but it begins with an act of surrender and stop rebelling and stop your pride and just receive the gift graciously open it up receive it and if you will do that you will begin to enjoy the benefit of it you need to kind of just do something with that gift and, and learn how to use it just like you would any gift Romans six twenty three: the wages of sin is death but here it is the what the gift the gift of God is eternal life but it only comes one way and through one person in Christ Jesus our Lord that's why we're celebrating this morning that's why we're here this morning and again thank you for being here I know with travel and many people with family it's difficult to journey to church and some people are out of town but I just want to say again thank you for honoring Christ and being here today because we're acknowledging this awesome gift that Christ has given us of himself and that brings us into the next gift the gift of Jesus Christ in Isaiah 9 6 it says this for unto us I love that I focus on it almost every year because it doesn't say for them Jesus was born for somebody else Jesus was born unto us a child is born unto us a son is what given and the government will be upon his shoulder that is a, a promise yet to be fulfilled but you can begin to let him reign and govern in your life if you'll submit to him his name shall be called wonderful counselor mighty God everlasting father Prince of Peace, the only child who has ever been born into the world that bears all of these titles and has the credentials to back it up with what he has done is Jesus, the Messiah, the Anointed One. Matthew 1.23, the virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and they will call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. In Isaiah 53, 4 through 6, it talks about this gift of Christ and what he does for us. So we see the gospel message, not only in the New Testament, but we see the gospel message of Jesus Christ in the Old Testament. And Isaiah 53 has it, talking about this one who would be born. He was going to do something more than just be an earthly ruler. He was going to deal with our sin and our broken relationship with God. And it says this in Isaiah 53, 4 through 6. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him, esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. When Christ took that beating, before he was even taken to the cross, he was doing it for you. His great love he was saying this is I'm going to prove to you how much I love you with more than words I'm literally going to give of my life for you he was wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities the chastisement for our peace was upon him and by his stripes by his beating by everything he took in his body we are healed this is talking about the spiritual relationship between God and us that broken relationship has been healed through the sacrificial life death and resurrection the person of Jesus Christ the one true God man he's the only one that could do it and then it tells us the truth all we like sheep have gone astray we've all turned everyone to his own way but the Lord has laid on him on Christ the iniquity of us all Joseph got this phrase or this promise from the angel about Christ Talking about Mary, she will give birth to a son and you'll give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. There it is, the gift of forgiveness. That brings us into the next gift that I want us to think about. God offers you and I forgiveness. And the way that we receive that forgiveness, just in the way that physically to receive a gift, you got to kind of open up your arms and your hands and you need to take it in and you need to open it up well, if you want to receive the forgiveness of Christ 
spiritually you have to believe it because how do you receive a spiritual gift you can't wrap your arms around it it's spiritual so you got to do it with your mind your soul your spirit and so first of all it's to believe that Christ died for you personally but then the way you receive it also is just to simply confess admit it if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and here's the awesome part purify us from all unrighteousness Another gift that God gives us is the gift of daily love and mercy. Have you had a bad day yesterday? Guess what? Today, God's offering you a new gift this morning, his mercy, his steadfast, loyal love. The Bible tells us this in Lamentations, and the guy that wrote this didn't have an easy life. The guy that wrote this, he was a prophet named Jeremiah, and he was persecuted terribly for standing for his faith in a culture that didn't agree with what he believed in. They rejected God. They rejected him. They rejected his message. They even put Jeremiah in, in prison, in, in stocks and in chains. He was terribly mistreated. How could a guy who was mistreated that badly in a culture that didn't want to trust in the God that he was proclaiming the God who gives us these gifts. How could he write this? Because in the midst of all his harsh circumstances, he knew the gift giver. It wasn't just the gifts, he knew the gift giver. And that's why he said the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. And then I love this, they are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. If you are having a bad day today, you have an opportunity tomorrow to receive the new mercies that he wants to give you. There's another gift that he gives us that we often don't think about. It's the gift of faith. Ephesians 2, 8 through 10 says this. Here's this grace word mentioned again. It is by grace you have been saved. So there's that gift of grace through faith. And this not of yourselves, it's a gift of God, not of works, so that no one can boast. Did you hear that? It is the gift of God, this salvation but it's also talking about the faith that we have to believe is a gift that God has given us. So even the faith that we have to trust God, we can't brag about it or be prideful about it because even the ability to believe is a gift that God has given us, this faith. Not by work so that no one can boast. And then it says this, for we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. So that leads us into kind of the final gift, and it's really not one gift, it's several gifts, and then it's an opportunity for us to take the gifts that God has given us and then use it in the world to give back to God and to give to others. And it all, it all comes on the heels. Sorry, that woke you up, didn't it? I didn't move. But look at what it says there. We are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus prepared in advance for us to do that's talking about the spiritual gifts now these are specific gifts and abilities that God gives every single one of us that trust in Christ um, so let's we'll wrap it up with this the, the final gift that I want to talk about is the spiritual gifts and abilities God gives to all of us so here's another more gifts that he's pouring out and you may not look at it that way but whatever intelligence whatever knowledge you have whatever ability to function in the world it is a gift that God has given you in fact I find it interesting that even those who don't claim to follow God or believe in him if they're very talented how are they often referred to they're often referred to as talented and and gifted <laughs> Talented and gifted. Well, who gifted them? We use that phrase and see without even realizing it, we're acknowledging higher power authority. God is the one who has given each of us the abilities and the gifts that we have. So there are physical talents and abilities, but then there are spiritual gifts and abilities that God gives to every single one of us when we receive the gift of Christ. He says, I'm not done yet. I'm going to give you some more spiritual gifts. I have some things I want you to do to do my work in the world, and I'm going to give you these special abilities. And they're mentioned in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 12. They're mentioned in Romans 12. They're mentioned in Ephesians 4 and 1 Peter 4, and we're not going to go into those today. But I would like to, in January, 
perhaps offer a class that will focus on some of these specific spiritual gifts and if you are not familiar with those gifts I'd invite you to come to that class you'll be hearing more about that after the first of the year but as we close this morning we're going to just close with some celebration a couple of songs here and then right before we dismiss I want to give you an opportunity to just once again respond to this wonderful gift giver um, of God and of Christ Heavenly Father I thank you for the opportunity this morning to just talk about what I've received for Christmas from you and what each of us have had the opportunity to receive from you I pray that you use this message to enlighten our hearts encourage us help us to think about all the gifts that you offer us each day that sometimes we take for granted thank you for the physical gifts that we've been given this day and and yesterday and in the days ahead but help us to never forget not only your gifts but you as the gift giver and help us to celebrate that and to celebrate you now in these moments as we sing in your name amen